And a good day here today here at Homewood Field and looking forward to this matchup between Johns Hopkins and Franklin and Marshall. All right, looking forward to this contest here is the Jays. will kick off after FNM won the coin toss and decided to receive to get this game started. Jamie Sullivan ready to boot this ball away. And back to receive, here is Brendan Deering, the freshman. Bobbles the uh, kick return, picks it up at the 14 and immediately hit. Down at that 19 yard line. And it was Ian Lodge on the uh, tackle for the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays. All right, so we begin today with the Jays on defense, and you know, that's a defense that we're coming used to knowing those guys that'll be out on the field. Five up front, sophomore Mike Kalanick along with senior Lance Hammond. There's Nick Marinelli, the senior, and Keontae Henson, the senior. The guys at linebacker include the men in the middle, Robbie Johnson, the junior, and James Clauser, a sophomore, Ian Lodge, the junior, and uh, Addison Quinones is out on the field as well. Cornerbacks include Michael Monday and Macaulay Kilbane. Kilbane tested right away Aaron, on the pass. It was complete from quarterback Taylor Arisman to Dylan Aldifer. At play, a 12-yard gain First in a first down. And on first down and 10, here's Arisman back to, he got hit as he threw. Pass is incomplete, and Arisman got chopped down from behind. A second down and 10 oh, coming up here from the 32-yard line. Jays on defense. The man back deep is junior Michael Curry. They include Kilbane and Monday out in the uh, corner position. Franklin and Marshall goes three wide. They'll use the uh, H back here. Harrisman, the high snap. He'll sling it down the sideline for his main receiver, KJ. Pretty. And it is incomplete. It'll bring up a third down and 10. Well, for the Franklin and Marshall offense, Taylor Harrisman's now a junior and a guy who knows how to complete passes. He has a 69.9% pass completion percentage. Has thrown 15 touchdowns this year and just three interceptions. The man knows how to get the ball in his receiver's hands. The Jays with two straight incompletions here on this series of downs. Third down and 10 now from the 32-yard line. Here's Harrisman, has a pocket, throws and overthrows his man incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down and the punt team on for Johns Hopkins to receive and have their first Offensive series of the game. Back to receive is Zach Fernandez. Garrett Pershey is a freshman. He's a backup quarterback, but he has been the main punter for the Diplomats this year. 16 punts. He's landed eight of them inside the 20. This will be an effort to do just that. He lays it up, sends it towards the sideline. Oh, it is going to hit and roll down inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. 
There's Percy with a great punt for the Diplomats. 51-yard punt. And his ninth punt inside the 20 of just his 17 punts this season. More than half of his punts inside the 20. All right, so the Jays on offense. Johns Hopkins will begin. David Tamaro at quarterback. He was. Slashed him in our last video stream here. His first pass complete at Caggiano. Up past the 25. To the 26-yard line. A gain of nine. It'll bring up second down and one. But here are those guys. And Tamaro watched him. Watched him get hurt. In the uh, last game that we showed here against Moravian, he sat out the game against Dickinson, in which the Jays did win 41 to 10. But last week, losing to Ursinus 21 17, it was Tamara's return. Here's the pass complete to Caggiano once again. And Caggiano up past the, to the 37 yard line, a gain of 11. And a first down. From the 37. So Tamaro came back last week and was 20 of 41 against that Ursinus team. There he was under 50%, and that's not what we saw to Tamaro the first couple games. He's going way downfield. Luke McFadden's got it! <laughs> Brought down at the 18-yard line. What a big-time throw and catch. 45 yards. And yeah, a first down here for Johns Hopkins. As they drive against this Franklin and Marshall defense, it's been one of the better ones in the conference. On first down, Tamaro slings the pass complete to Hubley on the screen. Hubley with the stiff arm pass, Jeff Leone. To the 13-yard line, a gain of five. five. Second down and five. Ryan Carey has been out on the field for the Jays. Now, seeing Hogan Irwin in the backfield. And here is Tamaro, slings, Caggiano. He overturns the complete. Caggiano, McFadden, Hubley, the freshman. We'll see a bunch of others here today. As Jacob Yor, sophomore, coming in. That last set featured the two tight end set that included Chuck Norgel and Steven Gervasi. Jays will empty the backfield and put Carey up in a slot on the right side. It's Yor and Caggiano to the left. No, excuse me, it's Hubley and Caggiano to the left, and this is Hubley in motion. And now we're going to get a penalty flag. It's too much motion here on third down and five from the 13-yard line. Offense the 35. Third down. All right, back him up, and it will be a third down and 10 for the Jays. They'll still feature McFadden and Yor to the right side. Left on the boundary is Caggiano and Hubley, and carries in the backfield. Third and 10 from the 18-yard line. Jays have been on the move. Across the middle, overthrows the pass to Yor and Hubley. There's some pressure in the backfield. Jacob That's Brendan Kilkenny and down. along with uh, Bobby McDevitt who came in. So it brings up fourth down. And it'll be Jamie Sullivan on for a field goal attempt. Well, 35 yards. Jamie this season, 11 of 14 from his field goal attempts. And this time from 35 yards. A little movement, but the kick is up, and it is good. It is good. Johns Hopkins on the board to get us started. 
12.08 to play here in the first quarter. And Johns Hopkins a 3-0 lead early in this contest. There's been plenty of history between these uh, two teams. No doubt. John Hopkins scoring drive, seven plays, 65 yards, one minute and 54 seconds. Jamie Sullivan, 35 yard field goal. The 69th meeting between the two schools in a series which started at 1912. Blue Jays have uh, won 18 of the last 20 meetings between the two. Franklin and Marshall, before last week, had been the last team to beat the Jays in the Centennial Conference and did so back in 2012. Or Sinus winning 21-17 last year. Snapped a 40-game Centennial Conference win streak that the Jays had marshaled through those years from 2012 on. His game against Franklin and Marshall played the week before the bye week for the Centennial Conference, yet this game against Franklin and Marshall had typically been the game that was played later in the season. With the schedule shuffle, here we are in October, early October, and playing this matchup. F&M has won their last three games by seven points or less. And on first down, here's the give to Talib Gerald. Gerald this guy is a one who's in the top ten all time in diplomat history in many categories. This year he's already run for 358 yards. He's got four touchdowns. And on first down, a gain of six brings up a second down and four. Up front for Franklin and Marshall, Brian Denecor is a sophomore, Phil Weiser a sophomore, Brendan Lowe a junior, A.J. Gasser a senior, and Tim Fink a sophomore. Here is Erisman, give to Gerald, met at the line, Marinelli with the initial contact before he's brought down at the 32-yard line on a gain of one. It'll bring up third down and three. Franklin and Marshall with the two primary receivers, uh, K.J. Pretty, who averages 17.8 yards per catch and seven touchdowns this year. Dylan Aldifer, a senior, who's got four touchdown catches of his own. Here's Erisman on third down and three, and his pass is incomplete. He had found Aldifer, but that pass was broken up. Broken up by Macaulay Kilbane. By Macaulay Kilbane, the freshman cornerback, who made contact as the pass came into the hands of Aldifer. Exactly. They'll bring up fourth down, and Percy to kick once again. All right, Fernandez calls for the fair catch. Isn't able to bring it in, but in the pursuit does at least force it out of bounds. So Jays take over the 34-yard line for their second possession. Now one note that uh, Steve Ulrich from the Centennial Conference office had, uh, had provided, of course, the Steve Ulrich, the commissioner of the conference, had seen the teams that have scored on their opening drives, and F&M was one of the best. As on first down, here's the give to Ryan Carey. He's met head on and dropped behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of one. As uh, Steve Gervasalis. Actually, correction, that was Irwin, the sophomore, with the carry. And on second down, here's a lot of pressure. Tamaro fights through two and is able to get upfield to the 37 yard line for a gain of four. Well, it'll bring up a third and down and seven. Third down. Down. All 
right on this third down and long. There's Hubley in motion. Tamara looking to go up top. I mean, maybe even back shoulder to Caggiano. A tight coverage by the senior Ben Okun, who happens to be their leading tackler. And it's incomplete. We'll bring up a punt, uh, fourth down and punt team on. You know, just looking at the, I'll give you the opening drive tally in just a second, but here is, uh, for his first attempt, here's Brandon Hong Dominguez. And he gets a good foot into it. It's Kevin Lammers, who'll take it at his 23-yard line. And runs out of bounds at the 28. So a five-yard return to the 28-yard line. It's just an indication, really, of points on the opening drive of the game of uh, how teams get at it as quickly as they do. And Franklin and Marshall in their five games this year had scored touchdowns. Had actually scored touchdowns, not just scored, but scored touchdowns on four of their five opening drives of games. So in this one, Jays forced them after a first down and then a three and out following. Johns Hopkins has scored twice on their opening drive, two touchdowns, and today convert a field goal. Arisman on first down, leads his man out of her, but it's just a tad too far. Grant Moser in coverage. Bring up second and 10. Intended for Don first run, second down. down. All right, Franklin and Marshall will go three wide. Have Gerald in the backfield and then give it to him on the zone. And what a good play up front as Gerald couldn't turn the corner. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Ian Lodge locked into the receiver for Gennaro Perry and forced him back straight into the direction that Gerald was carrying the ball. Made the tackle, came off the block and made the tackle. Third and 10 right now, and this Jays defense. Ready to play here in this first quarter against the Centennial Conference leading Franklin and Marshall Diplomats. On third down, a draw play, and give to Gerald. Make coming up to make the tackle is Moser. Sticks him at the 32-yard line for a gain of four. And a fourth down once again. Another punt for Percy. And a four-yard fourth down. All right, Fernandez at first steps up to take the punt. Let's it one bounce right into his arms at the 31. Won't let it roll back any farther. And let the dips down it deeper in their own territory. The Jays have the ball at the 31, 7.49 to play. Jays looking to get back on track after a loss last week to Ursinus by the score of 21 to 17. Bears quarterback, Tom Garlick, who's a sophomore, was named the Offensive Player of the Week for Centennial Conference. Play, here's the long ball. It's down to McFadden, he's got it. Boy, had his eyes on that one as Tamaro let it fly to the 35 yard line. A gain of 34 yards. First down, Jensen Hopkins. Tamara, after a uh, sub-50% performance last week in the completion game, sent him in the air against this diplomat defense. A carry in motion. Tamara takes a snap, throws the pass complete to Caggiano. He'll gain out four out of it to the 31. 
Ryan Carey had, had, had a career high rushing, or excuse me, had a season high rushing mark, 97 yards last week. It's been tough going for the run game for the Jays. And here is the pass for Tamaro, and it is almost picked off. Well read that time by Leon. Third down. Happens to be his fifth pass breakup of the season. Third down and six coming up. Now the Jays, by losing last week, had their longtime Centennial Conference streak snapped. 45-game uh, regular season win streak snapped as well. Also lost in the month of September, which they hadn't done in a long time. Pass is complete on the slant to Ryan Hubley. He's down to the 12-yard line on a gain of 19 yards. 19-yard pass play. First down. So the Jays on this warm day have looked to go to the air quite a bit and use their speed in other cases. Empty backfield from the 12. On first down. Campanile at uh, right tackle right now. Gall at center. And here's the pass play on the bubble screen, read well by the diplomat defense. Carey with the uh, reception and tackled right away by uh, Sylvia Munez. So the play loses four to bring up second down and 14. Well, last week, yeah, Garlic, the uh, sophomore, led the game winning score against. Uh, Johns Hopkins, 13 play, 74 yard drive in the final five minutes. He ran it in with 20 seconds left and the Jays lost in Quakertown, 21 to 17. A lot of pressure, Tamaro able to get it off to Carey and it's an incomplete pass. And it's ruled an incomplete pass and that's a good thing. Third down. All right, so third down and 14. Of course, the rotation of the guys up front, and get some work. Sophomores Frank Patraco and Joe Figueroa on the left side. And on third down and 14, here's Tamaro. He's going for the corner. McFadden, did he have a foot down? Got it! Touchdown, Judge Hopkins! <laughs> Whoa, Luke McFadden did great work to make sure he brought that one in inbounds. I know we'll take a look at it a few times, but man, that guy found where the boundary was, made sure he didn't leave and come back in, and then ensured that his one foot would land inbounds. Extra point attempt, Jamie Sullivan is good. 10 nothing our score here in the first quarter. What a brilliant catch by Luke McFadden when Tamara let it go, thought it might be headed out of bounds, and instead you've got McFadden with his sixth touchdown reception this year, bringing it in. That's 13 in his Johns Hopkins career. Hopkins scoring drive, seven plays, 69 yards. Two minutes and 26 seconds. Tamaro to McFadden, 16-yard touchdown pass. And for Tamaro, his eighth touchdown pass this year. And the guys that have been his primary receivers in the end zone, McFadden now with six. Caggiano has two here in 2017. Here's Johns Hopkins looking to get back on the winning track and right now with a 10-0 lead here in the first quarter, just 10 minutes into the contest. And send it down where Dearman will take it at his 13-yard line. Middle return, bounces off one man before he's brought down. And it looked like that was uh, 
Kilbane in on the tackle. After the initial contact. All right, so for the uh, Jays, we'll go with uh, Anthony Davidson on the line, joining Marinelli, Henson, and Hammond. And the give to Gerald, he's not going anywhere. Now it's been tough running right now for Franklin and Marshall. A loss of a yard on the play. That'll bring up second down and 11. Contact straight away. Talib Gerald. All right, Diplomats with four wideouts. And Harrisman. They go with a little play action over. Throws his man incomplete. He got hit as he threw two. He was looking for Lammers over on the uh, far side. Third down and 11 coming up. Now, KJ Pretty is the uh, man that Harrisman's found the most. 31 completions coming into this game. Aldifer's caught 23, and Lammers 13. Those three guys joined out on the field, too, by Perry. And here's Harrisman across the middle looking for Perry, who brings it in. That pass complete for 13 yards. And a first down for the Diplomats. Fourteen yard pass down. All right, on the zone read. Arisman lost the ball. Decided to keep it himself and then didn't bring it back into his body. It's recovered by Johns Hopkins. Linebacker James Closser was the one to re recover the fumble. And the Jays take over in F&M territory. And you can see he just wasn't able to bring it right back into his body. Saw the oncoming tackle and a moment of indecision with the turnover. Jays on first down. Here's the give to Carey. Left side. And they run right into a pile. Lose a yard on the play. Second and 11 coming up. Uh, just starting to, just about to tell you about Franklin and Marshall with being up at the 41 yard line and the possibility that they could have made it into Johns Hopkins territory for the first time today. Lost Lost the one yard, second down. Down. Instead, the turnover. And it'll bring up second down and 11 now after the one yard loss. And Tamaro looks for his man to Nick Freeze, who doesn't bring it in. And the act of bringing that ball down into his body actually hit the leg and bounced incomplete. Intended for Nick Freeze, third down. All right, so third down coming up, and the Jays are ready to throw. Lone receiver over on the left side is Caggiano. Three to the right include Hubley, Yor, and McFadden. Here's Tamaro, has to step up past the pressure. He'll take it towards the sideline. And we'll get it down to the 33-yard line. So a gain of nine, it'll bring up a fourth down and two. And much more manageable on fourth down. In the dead zone area. Not really a time for a punt. Too long for a field goal here in the college game. Here the Jays on fourth and two. Carey in motion will take a man out. Immediately pressure and sack. Tamaro 
As Joe Granahan was the one who came free from around the edge. Down to Marrow back at the 37 yard line. So play loses four yards. Great field position here for the Dips at the 37 yard line. Remember their last drive ended with the uh, fumble at the 41. We'll see if Franklin and Marshall can resume with the drive that they had started before. On oh, first down, here's Erisman on the slant pass. It's complete to Pretty, and they're in Johns Hopkins territory. Lost the ball apparently on the way down. Not seeing any official. I'll say that his knee was down. The linesman comes in to make that call. Would have been a tough one for the far linesman to have made. Well, the head linesman over here on this near side agrees. Take a look at that replay. Running out of field. Runner was down prior to the fumble. First down. As that that he was, was first, down. first down. He was down before giving up the ball. Diplomats in Hopkins territory. First time today. And the ball at the 46-yard line. And on first down, here's Erisman. Pocket. And he's brought down. There's Tommy Burke. I thought Burke was still getting blocked by Denicor. He had just reached around and was able to bring in Harrisman. Look at him caught up in that blocking pile. He brings him down two yards behind the line of scrimmage. There's the senior, Tommy Burke. So the Jays second and 12. I'll bring it back to a 3-4-4 setup with the uh, three receivers. And boy, on the give, talk about a late <laughs> read was Erisman. He sent Gerald spinning, not having the ball. And he held on this time. Robbie Johnson. Play gains two. They're back to the original line of scrimmage. Third down and 10. In this play before, this was the pretty reception that wasn't a fumble. And instead, down by contact. All right, from the Jays, 46-yard line. Third down and 10. Outerford to the right side, looking across the middle. Outerford right into that zone. A first down. To the 31-yard line. On a gain of 23 yards. 15 yard pass play, first down. Excuse me, a gain of 15. It was from the Jays, 46. A perfect route run into the heart of that Johns Hopkins zone. First and 10 from the 31. Aldifer and Perry on the right side, pretty on the left. And here's Erisman. Boy, a lot of pressure right away, and he just. Has to fight forward for a two-yard loss. Watches right off the edge. Quickly was Quinones. Forced him right into Stout's hands. And so the sack has a second and 12 from the 33-yard line. This time it'll be uh, the freshman Timothy Walter along with Perry, senior on the right side. Pretty on the left and out of first tight to the line. Gerald in the backfield, Arisman. A little pass quick to Outerfer off that tight end position. Kilbane forced him out of bounds. At the 27 yard line. Gain of six. Seven yard pass by third down. And that'll be the last play of the first quarter. So Franklin and Marshall on the drive. But Johns Hopkins leads 10 to nothing after one quarter of play. 
I'll rejoin you in a minute here on Hop TV, HopkinsSports.com, part of the Centennial Conference Digital Network. Here's the scores of the first quarter. All right, Steve Stauffberg back with you here at Homewood Field. The score, Johns Hopkins 10, Franklin and Marshall 0. The diplomats on their drive that have brought them into Johns Hopkins territory for the first time. Franklin and Marshall, uh, well, had Vince Moffitt off of that defensive side, earned Defensive Player of the Week last week in their 17-14 win against Muhlenberg. Had 12 tackles, interception, and recovered a fumble on the final play to seal the win. Right on uh, third down and six. It is a uh, six-yard pass play. 21 and a first down for Franklin and Marshall. First down. Arisman to Walter, the completed pass, and a fresh set of downs. So on the drive here for Franklin and Marshall. Pretty to the left side. Perry and Outerfer to the right. And Arisman takes the high snap, looking for Pretty. Back shoulder, a little push off, and a touchdown. Macaulay Kilbane in tight coverage, but it was KJ Pretty who knew that pass was coming. As you take a look, you can see the turnaround. The only way you turn around that quickly is to use your other man as leverage. And that's exactly what KJ Pretty did. Eighth touchdown oh, reception of the year. Arisman's 16th touchdown pass. And the diplomats on the board here with the extra point attempt. Harvey Wedholm. Kick is good. And so Franklin and Marshall, their first score of the game early here in the second quarter. 10 7 now. Favor the Jays. I was handed the scores from other Centennial Conference games. Everybody started at the same time that we did here in Baltimore. It's the more important game to take a look at. Earth Sinus at Muhlenberg where the Bears beat Hopkins last week and are undefeated. It was an eight-play, 63-yard drive. Uh, talked over that for PA announcer Chris Ely. Well, anyhow, last week in the other game, uh, or this week, last week, Ursinus beat Johns Hopkins. They're undefeated. But today at Muhlenberg, the Mules have a 14-0 lead early in the second quarter. Muhlenberg at 3-2, and 2-2 two. Two and two in conference play. Or Sinus undefeated at 4-0 and oh in conference play. And that game, this game, that's the four teams at the top of the Centennial Conference rankings. Really the opportunity for either schools to separate from one another or to really be condensed into a big bubble of teams with nearly the same records. All right, solid return there for Johns Hopkins. Up to the 31-yard line. That was Patrick Kelly on the return from that defensive back unit. So Muhlenberg, a 14-0 lead over Sinus. Other games in action. Well, the Susquehanna is 2-2 two and two after their three-game run through Johns Hopkins, Franklin and Marshall, and Muhlenberg. They have a 14-7 lead at Moravian today. That game early in the second quarter. On first down, here's the give, and it's Hogan Irwin as he turns it up and lost his footing at the 35-yard line on a gain of four. Hogan Irwin second and six here. coming up. McDaniel has been a surprise here this year with the number of wins they've had early on. They're three and two coming into their game today at Dickinson, and right now trailing the Red Devils 7-3 to three, midway through their first quarter. On second down, the read by Tamaro. He'll keep and brought down at the 38-yard line. Games three, it'll bring up third down and four. The other game in action today, Juniata hosting Gettysburg and leading 14-0 late in the first quarter in that contest. 
All right, here's Tamaro on third down and four with Carey in the backfield and a lot of pressure. Throws to Caggiano, brings it in after the bobble. Turns it up past midfield and brought down at the 40-yard line. Caggiano had two catches uh, on the first couple plays and has another one here in the second quarter after the 23-yard reception. On first down, here's the give, Ryan Carey. Lowers his head after contact made by the linebacker uh, Sebastian Silvia Munez. Play gained three yards. It's second down and seven. Jays line up with uh, McFadden and Caggiano on the right side. Kyle Morris and well now Hubley in motion from the left. They'll throw to Hubley on the screen. Pass complete. Gets past one guy, gets a first down and a little more. Down to the 25 yard line, 12 yards, and he made it all happen on his feet. Caggiano held that block just enough. The first man down. coming in looked like that might have been Dylan Jones, and he slipped right past his tackle. The single digit could have been Okun as well. So first and 10 for the Jays, the 25 yard line. And here's Tamaro on that receiver screen. And it is read right away by Jeff Leone. Ewer brought it in, but he was tackled behind the line of scrimmage at the 28. Loss of three. Second down well, and 13. Down. And the Jays have used that well, but the receivers have to get on top of their defenders immediately to make that screen work. Empty backfield this time. Now stick Irwin in the slot. And here's Tamaro's pass. Complete to Caggiano. He brings it in. Fights down to the 19-yard line. He's in the big frame. Nine-yard game. It'll bring up a third down and four. Nine-yard pass play, third down. Had the first quarter numbers. Here we are four minutes into the second, the Jays driving. It's 10-7 right now, favor Johns Hopkins. Jacob Yore in motion. Tamaro rolls the pocket to the right. Pass to Caggiano's complete. He's inside the 10. And it'll be a goal-to-go -go situation for Johns Hopkins from the nine-yard line. As Tamaro found Caggiano once again. First and goal, John Hopkins. McFadden each had three receptions in that first quarter, and he's gone to Brett a couple times here in the second. So it's first and goal to go from the nine-yard line. And in motion, carry. They don't use the jet screen. Excuse me, the jet sweep. Tamaro keeps it himself and fights to the six yard, seven yard line. Gain of two yards, second and goal. So a gain of two. Second and goal from the seven yard line. Tamara looks for the call from the sideline. He's got three wide outs to the right. The ball's in the center of the field. And here's Tamaro looking on the slant. He's got it. Hubley reaches out. Oh, Touchdown. Okay. From Johns Hopkins. And Ryan Hubley, the freshman with his first touchdown as a Blue Jay. All right, here's Jamie Sullivan's extra point attempt. And Sullivan's kick is good. Sullivan now 20 of 20 on extra point attempts this season. 
17 to seven our score for the Jays. Shots up in the scoring drive, 10 plays, 69 yards, 4 minutes and 45 seconds. Tomorrow to Ryan Hubley, 7 yard touchdown pass. All right, just taking a look at some of those first quarter numbers. Yes, I know we're well into the second, but over on the Franklin and Marshall side on offense, uh, the team had 72 yards offense in the first quarter. Johns Hopkins 146. We we'll watched uh, Talib Gerald get bottled up by this Johns Hopkins defense. In the first quarter, he had five carries, nine yards. Arisman finished with four carries and minus two yards after getting sacked. All right, this is Lammers on the return. Runs right into Corey Tall and brought down at the 28-yard line. The return a little less than 20 yards. Franklin and Marshall with the ball at the 28-yard line. Well, coming into this week's action, uh, Ursinus 5-0, and and that's the first time they've been that uh, had that record since 2010. And it really turns out that with Johns Hopkins and Muhlenberg both losing last week, Johns Hopkins to Ursinus, and Muhlenberg to Franklin and Marshall, that was the last time that they both had lost on the same regular season weekend since October 17, 2009. All right, on first down, here's the give. Gerald It's the Tlaib Gerald, gain of two. Second down and eight coming up. Well, with the loss, the Jays uh, fell out of the D3Football.com top 25. They still received votes, but just weren't enough to be in the top 25 itself. Jays have been in that uh, top 25 for 66 consecutive uh, polls. All right, here's Arisman. We'll shoot the quick pass complete to Walter the freshman. Harris who sits Harris down on it at the 34-yard line. Play games four. It'll bring up third down and four. As Franklin and Marshall squad undefeated. They blew out Lebanon Valley in the non-conference game, 48-7, and then opened up against Juniata at home and won 52-7. After that, this team has played games in which they've won by two, three, and three points respectively in those three games. That game against McDaniel turned out to be a 43-41 winner. That was the last time we had done a video stream, and McDaniel had had a lead on this Franklin and Marshall team throughout. All right, they diplomats have kept their own bubble screen. Kevin Lammers on the catch, but it was read well for just a one-yard loss. And so fourth down and five right now for the Diplomats. And Percy one 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 down. Down. Zach Fernandez back to receive. All right, Percy's kick, Fernandez. Fair catch at the 33, at the 34-yard line. 33-yard punt that time for Pershy. Well, Franklin and Marshall came back to beat McDaniel in that game back on September 16th, 43-41. They did that at home. They traveled to Susquehanna and won 27-24. Hosted Muhlenberg last week and won 17-14. They've done it and done it well in tight games. Here, Johns Hopkins with a 10-point lead. Low snap, fielded by Tamaro, and the give to carry. Breaks through the middle, up past midfield. Bounces it to the Hopkins sidelines. And out of bounds at the 32-yard line. A 34-yard gain for Ryan Carey. And the pass from Tamaro on first down is complete inside the 30 to the 29. Ryan Carey. 
Brought down by Silva Muniz. You know, in that D3Football.com poll, Franklin and Marshall not getting much love despite the wins over Muhlenberg and Johns Hopkins. Oh, excuse me, uh, Muhlenberg and Susquehanna. They only earned one vote. Or Sinus, though, undefeated. 25 votes. A penalty flag. Questions. Full start. Offense. Number 54. Five-yard penalty. Me. All right. False start penalty against uh, Campanile. So nobody from the Centennial Conference is in the uh, poll for D3Football.com in the top 25. Hopkins or Sinus each had votes along with Franklin and Marshall. All right, the second down and 12 after the penalty. All alone is Zach Fernandez. And Tomero finds him for the touchdown. 34 yards from Tomero to Zach Fernandez. And the Jays hit Pater once again. Jamie Sullivan, extra point, steps up, and it's true. So 24 to 7 after Zach Fernandez scores his first touchdown as a Blue Jay. We just say that a little earlier. Hubley and now Fernandez with their first scores and today coming against the leader of the Centennial Conference, Franklin and Marshall. Joe Tompkins scoring drive, three plays, 68 yards, 118 seconds. Tomorrow to Fernandez, 34 yard touchdown pass. And with that, Tomorrow's now got Another touchdown reception, another touchdown pass. To send him to have 10 this season. All right, Sullivan's kick. Gonna be Lammers back at his three yard line. Led to midfield and Found Addison Quinones, found him at the 19-yard line. Penalty flag beforehand on the play. Walking back, turn to the point. Half the distance from the foul, first down. So Franklin and Marshall will get backed up with a half the, go, half the distance to the goal penalty with the return only up to the 19-yard line. All right, so they got the ball spotted at the... Ball spotted at the seven yard line. All right, on first down, here's Arisman. Quick slant to Pretty. Brings it in at the 16 yard line. A gain of nine. Second and one coming up. At halftime today, we will have a chance to talk to new women's basketball coach, Catherine Bixby. She takes over for Nancy Funk, who retired last year after 31 years on the job, 500 wins plus here at Hopkins. 
This is Gerald running strong up to the 22-yard line. And we'll move the chains for a first down for Franklin and Marshall. We look forward to talking to Coach at halftime here of this contest. Johns Hopkins 24, Franklin and Marshall 7. First down. Still Gerald in the backfield. They'll put Pretty in the slot on the right side. You can see him at the bottom of your screen. And off screen is Perry. And he's looking for, Jer for Pretty right away. Who <laughs> did not bring it in. Erisman hit once again as he threw. The pass was behind Pretty anyhow. And he couldn't bring it in. He was ready to turn up field before he had it. Second and ten coming up. Put Pretty on the outside this time. You see they use him for what they've got as an opportunity. Arisman launched it sideline. Outer for a 10, bring it in. Third and 10. Third and 10. It's Johns Hopkins defense. Came into this game with a few different marks. Fourth in the conference in scoring defense. So far have held FM to seven points. Here's Arisman, has a pocket, throws across the middle. Harrison complete. complete Perry ran the zebra route behind the umpire. That will move the chains of the ball up the 32 yard line. Perry goes down. Looks like he might have cramped up. Didn't actually get the uh, game time temperature. First down. But at least right now, low 80s here today, and it's been sunny. And quite a nice day for football here in October. A lot of pressure here. They on the run blitz, and Gerald bounces it outside. He's still thrown down. Gerald Perry. At the line of scrimmage. It's like that was uh, the freshman Kilbane over there on the stop. And we expect it with the uh, Diplomat offense that they do use time. And, and nothing wrong with that, but here they are. Down three scores, 24 to 17, 24 to 7, with 3.45 to go in the second. And Arisman, he'll read and give to Gerald. Contacted right away, Quinones had early pressure. He's brought down at the line of scrimmage. Uh, one yard gain, actually. Bring up third down and nine. We're talking about this Hopkins defense. And the Jays came in here as, the, uh, as only the eighth best rush defense in the Centennial Conference. They've averaged giving up 176 yards on the ground. And today have essentially kept uh, Tlaib Gerald, the top ten all-time guy for the Diplomats, bottled up. Third down and nine, under three minutes to go in the quarter. Arisman, all kinds of time. He'll send it down for out of her and double coverage, and it's incomplete. Curry came over from the safety position Monday in tight coverage. That was one where even if it had been picked off, it was just as good as the punt that might have come up anyhow. So fourth down, and here's Percy, the punt once again. Percy. 
She's punt low. Lands at the 46 and then will roll to the 41 yard line. Al had some pressure and just didn't catch it on the right part of the foot. First Johns down. Hopkins, 59 yards to the end zone with 2.41 left to go. 26-yard punt. And on first down. Jays will line up with Caggiano and Hubley left side. Yor and McFadden to the right. Carey in the backfield with Tamaro. Here's Tamaro, his pass just out of the reach of Caggiano. Incomplete pass, bring up second down and 10. Hey, one website I want to bring up to you, if it hasn't made, uh, if it hasn't hit your Facebook feed or hasn't come across your uh, purview, well, take a look at this website. It's called theathletic.com, theathletic.com. A new site that's been set up by some uh, longtime reporters that have found themselves making a go of it on their own. Bubble screen pass to Hubley is brought in for a two-yard gain. It'll bring up third down and eight. Stuart Mandel from the college football side. Don Banks from the NFL side, Ken Rosenthal, Major League Baseball, and other nationally known writers you know, in this time of downsizing by some of the bigger ones have decided to go on their own. It's subscription-based, so you got to pay for it. But check it out, theathletic.com. Give you one story that I've got printed here. It's Tamaro going down the sideline looking for McFadden, and he can't bring it in. Would have been out of bounds anyhow. But just like Arisman before, going for the big it ball if it can complete it, or if not, a punt, or that would have been the punt. So fourth and eight, here's Hong Dominguez on the punt. Lemmers will stand back inside his own 20. The site itself has been, has had, uh, it's been full of interesting reads. They do cover things like teams on a daily basis as they have reporters in certain areas. Lammers well, takes Lammers it to his own 15 return. yard line. And That's Kelly the with the uh, tackle of the first contact. Five yard return to the 20 yard line. One of the college Five football stories return. was headlined this past, uh, just a couple weeks ago was labeled what the Ivy League discovered when it moved kickoffs up five yards. Now, they did this on their own uh, for last season and moved it to where kickers would kick off from the 40-yard line, of course. Concussions an issue on kick returns. And uh, essentially what they uh, found out was that the number of concussions did decrease. I didn't say they had many. It wasn't a huge statistical drop because in the uh, prior year, there were still under 10 concussions, but it had been dropped to where it was negligible. All right, Arisman on first down, and the defense with the sack. Back at the 13-yard line. Lost to seven. All right, I heard Chris Ely say it was Hammond and Quinones on the sack. Lost seven yards, second down. Right on second down at 17, Arisman forced out of the pocket once again. He rolls and finds his man, K.J. Pretty, and it's right at the marker to the 30-yard line. A first down on a great play made by Arisman. Watch him scramble, keep the line of scrimmage, though, and get that pass off going against his body. So first down and 10. And on first down, Arisman forced out. 
He'll scramble to the sideline, stop the clock at the 35 yard line after a gain of five. Well, with that move up to the 40-yard line, what they discovered was that the uh, that touchbacks happen twice as often in league play as they did in any kind of non-conference play that they had. Of course, all done in player safety. All right, on second down, here's Arisman. The swing pass to Gerald, Arisman, out of bounds. Gerald. It's gonna be short of the first down. Klosser closed in on him. They third down and three. Two yard yard pass play. Play. The numbers were such. Third third down. Down. In the three previous seasons, the Ivy League averaged six con concussions per year during kickoffs. Last season in 2016 with the new touchback or new kickoff line. They didn't have any concussions on kickoff returns. Could have been coincidental. They continue it in 2017. Arisman can't get the ball off and is sacked by that Johns Hopkins defense once again. Franklin and Marshall will be forced to punt once again. Timeout. Johns Hopkins calls timeout with, to stop the clock with 43 seconds left. And have a shot at another scoring opportunity. Also, oh, that was just one article there, one note that was brought up. And again, the site as a whole been a fun read and it's by guys that you know have the experience to cover the sport. All right, 43 seconds left here at the half. It'll be Percy kicking from his own 30-yard line. Fernandez standing back at his 32. And this time, does get it up in the air. Fernandez takes it as 35, jumps back past one. We'll head to the sideline. And be tackled at the 39-yard line. 33 seconds left for John Hopkins. Five-yard return, first down, John Hopkins. Now's the time in which they can look for play calls before having to get up in the hurry up mode. Two timeouts still for Hopkins to use. Here's Tamaro, his pass complete. McFadden down at the 45 yard line. A gain of 16, 44, a gain of 17. I'll start the clock for the change of place. Clock started, 20 seconds left, Tamaro. Looking across the middle, Caggiano complete. They'll call the timeout with 42 seconds left. By the way, thinking about scoring possibilities here. Longest career, uh, longest field goal made by Jamie Sullivan, 50 yards. That means they have to get to the, at least the 33 yard line. And the pass is picked off. McFadden fell down as the throw was uh, headed his way. It's Ben Okun with the interception with two seconds left. He returns the ball up to the 45 yard line. And Ben Ball. That's a one shot at the end zone here for Franklin and Marshall.
So the Jays will drop plenty of guys into the defensive zone. Even bring uh, Luke McFadden into the game to play deep. Jays will only rush three. FNM even uses Aldifer as a uh, as a tight end. And Aris been pressured with three guys, and he sacked and Mike he Kalonic. Wow. And that'll end the first half. It's a three-man rush. And Kalonic bull rushes his guy, and Hammond crashes in through the middle. And that'll bring us to the end of the first half. Should point out that with that, a couple of the linemen were slow to get up after that rush. And one man who's still down and being attended to is Tim Fink, the sophomore. So halftime score, 24 to seven. I'll have that interview with women's basketball coach Catherine Bixby. Get your first half numbers late in the, around the halftime. And uh, some scores as well. Fink is up on his feet. And he's walking off with a good limp and helped just a little bit by a teammate. Halftime score, Johns Hopkins 24, Franklin and Marshall 7. To leave Gerald on the ground was 9 carries, 18 yards. Jays have only had 10 rushing attempts to Franklin and Marshall 17. Jays have done a lot of work on that defensive side. I'm telling you before that here as they uh, as they look at the uh, here as they look at the first half numbers and see that the team was held to negative two yards of rushing. The Jays had come into this game average giving up 176 yards of rushing uh, per contest. All right, Franklin and Marshall set to kick off. Remember they had the coin toss and elected to receive in the first half. Ryan Carey from in his own end zone does bring it out. Ryan past Carey the 20-yard line to the 22. So a 27-yard return <coughs> for Ryan Carey. And the Jays out of the locker room with possession. Uh, come out for the uh, start of this. First down, John Tucker. Third quarter. With Petraco and Figueroa on the left side. Gall at center. Protecting Tamaro. Tamaro's pass complete to Brett Cagliano. Ben Oaken. Trevor Allen and uh, on the tackle. at that right guard position. And here is the, uh, I guess it was a pass. It might have been a, might have counted as a lateral. It might have been behind him. And that is a first down. Second down and four. All right, so the Jays up to the 35 yard line. Excuse me, 34. And once again, here's Tamaro's pass. It's complete Tamaro's McFadden. Complete and McFadden, as he goes to the ground, lost the ball, Brenton so it's an incomplete, incomplete pass. McFadden. Second down. Tough tackle there by Leon. To force it out of his hands. Second and 10 coming up. Give you an update on those scores. Around the conference, everybody kicked off at 1 o'clock. Just like we did here in Baltimore. As Tamaro on the screen pass to Hubley, complete. Pass to 35 and brought down at the 37-yard line on a gain of three. 
Jeff Leone. Vince Moffitt. And Jeff pass, Leone. Right third down. In on the play. All right, so Muhlenberg still leading, hosting Ursinus. It's 14 to 7, Muhlenberg. Nine minutes to go in the third quarter. Dickinson still has a lead over McDaniel. That's 7 to 3 at the half. McFadden brings it in at the 46 yard line to move the chains. A third down conversion there for Johns Hopkins. First down, Johns Hopkins. All right, on first down from the 46-yard line. And the pass is complete out of the backfield to Irwin. He's all the way down the field and inside the 25. Pass to beat the Tyler down to the 21-yard line. And it wasn't Hogan Irwin. Tyler Messinger in the game. And after that long run, Messenger obviously feeling it. Boy, had a solid run there. Coming off the field is Brett Caggiano. Thirty-four yard pass play. First down. Just touching. Possibility they get caught up in a downfield block. Tyler Messenger. See him in the game here. Let's so get into this second half. So the ball now down to the 20. And on the option. Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow didn't pitch the ball to Messenger. No game. Second down. Maybe got about a half yard to the actual 20. Second and 10 coming up. Jays with four wide right now. And Messenger in the backfield, and here's Tamaro. Quick pass, complete, and headed to the end zone. Touchdown, Nick Freeze. Take a look as Tamaro. Freeze ran right past his man. That might have been a corner blitz. Safety behind. Wasn't there to make the play on Nick Freeze. First drive of the third quarter, and the Jays bring it home. Jamie Sullivan's extra point. Penalty flag flies before. A false start penalty. So they'll back him up before attempting the try once again. And for Nick Freeze, now a sophomore, his first career touchdown as a Blue Jay. Jamie Sullivan extra point attempt is good. The is good. And the Jays with a 31 to seven lead. Here in the third quarter. Now I think it says a little bit about the team what we're seeing today about John, with Johns Hopkins. Two freshmen, Hubley and Fernandez, and the sophomore Freeze, their first career touchdowns. Well, Johns Hopkins scoring by 80 plays, 17 yards, two minutes, 36 seconds. Tomorrow for Freeze, 20 yard touchdown pass. And that's four touchdowns today for Tamaro. John Germano did that back in the uh, last time in the Randolph-Macon playoff game. 
Oh, and then the return, Deerman ran right into a pile and kept his feet, though, got up to the 25-yard line. Tamara had three touchdown passes against Susquehanna. So a career high for the sophomore. First down. I right, bought the 26 yard line for the first possession for the Diplomats. And the give to Gerald. And he runs right into the uh, waiting arms of Lance Hammond. Brings him down after a one-yard gain, Michael second down and nine. Hammond. All right, let me get to the rest of these scores. Sorry, I got away from him. Muhlenberg up 14-7 uh, to seven over one. Sinus. Dickinson still second leading 7-3 to three over McDaniel. That at the uh, halftime. Halftime score, Juniata leading Gettysburg 21-13. to 13. And in the third quarter, Susquehanna and Moravian are tied at 14. That just into the start of the third quarter. Pass from Harrison to Walter. Incomplete, double covered on the play. Looks like uh, Monday and Lodge. They're both there. Lodge's both guys come up to make the, make the play. So in this weekend, Hopkins leading by 24 over the uh, pre the undefeated uh, Franklin and Marshall Diplomats. Here's Erisman. He's got a bit of a pocket. Now pull it down. 30-yard line. Out of the ankle tackle by Johnson. And tackled up the 34. On a gain of seven, it'll bring up fourth and two, but it'll be a punt situation for Franklin and Marshall. Seven yards, fourth down. The other undefeated team are Sinus trailing 14 to seven at Muhlenberg right now. The Mules two losses this season, which is a rarity. Susquehanna, we've seen how tough of a team they are. And right now they're tied with the team that doesn't have a win, Moravian. This punt will bounce past Fernandez and it'll go inside the 10. Looks like this one's gonna get Marked down at the five yard line. Down down the five five yard yard line. line. A 61 yard punt that time for Garrett Pershey. 61 yard punt. The Jays up by 24, but have 95 yards to go to the end zone. Definitely an interesting uh, weekend so far with the games just having hit the half. All right, first and 10 from their own five yard line and on first down on the read. Carey will take it. And we'll gain uh, two yards to the seven. Second down and eight. Talked about with the loss last week ending the Regular season win streak, the Centennial Conference win streak. Jays still have a uh, streak going in the uh, month of October. Tomorrow's and with Tamaro completing one to McFadden, it'll be a fresh set of downs with an 18, with a 13 yard pass play. Jays have won 23 straight in the month of October. Looking to make that 24 today. All right, bubble screen complete to Fernandez. Wrapped up by Moffitt. And out of bounds up at the 25 yard line. Second and five on the way. Five yard pass away, second down. Yeah. 
And on second down, the option goes to Carey. Who breaks the tackle, is able to turn it up. 30, stays in bounds, 35. Spin move through the 40. And finally brought down at the 44-yard line. He's been waiting to break out. And Carey with a 19-yard run. Is that a 34-yarder? In the first half, a 19-yard today. On another tough running day for the Jays. Right, here's Tamaro. They'll set up the running back screen. And here's Carey with a couple blockers, but not a whole lot of room to run. Stops his forward motion at the 45-yard uh, line. Second down and nine. All those guys in pursuit of the quarterback are able to come back and make the stop. But Caggiano back in the game, he's the man down on the bottom of your screen after he came off limping. County flag thrown. Right to the staff. Full stop. Offense. 72. Five yard penalty. Main. Second down. So still a uh, second down and 14 here for Johns Hopkins in the third quarter. Frank on a Marshall showing five up at the line, ready to bring the six and seven. And Tamaro let it go for McFadden on the sideline, and it's broken up. It was right there for McFadden to bring it in, but Moffitt played the, uh, he basically played McFadden's eyes and his hands, and then just reached in there to break that up. Otherwise, it would have been another long completion to the junior, Luke McFadden. Third down and 14 on the 40-yard line. And a keeper here, Tamaro has the first down on the run on third down and 14. Late penalty flag thrown. So Tamaro had found the running room. The Tyler Messenger with the hold downfield. So it'll remain third down. Ball actually advanced. four yards from the previous line of scrimmage because the hold was right at the first down marker. Third and 10 from the 44 yard line. Franklin and Marshall showing that uh, blitz once again. Another penalty flag. And with the false start penalty, it's now third down and 15. Pressure right up the middle. Tamaro just has to get rid of it. That was uh, Vincent Speranza. It was unabated. And forced Tamaro to get rid of it.
All right, so Hong Dominguez on the punt. Lammers will receive for Franklin and Marshall. Well, actually had some pressure there. As Lammers will field it at his 29. Kevin Bottle Lammers up right Lammers away. At the 36-yard line. Tackled by Tyler Messenger. Your attention, please, to the owner of the Maroon Chrysler with handicap tag 8CK 27789. Please move your car at once. Handicap tag 8CK 2789. Maroon Chrysler. Please move your All right, first down and 10 here for Franklin and Marshall. And on the read option, Erisman keeps. And he is tackled at the line of scrimmage. James Foster. Second down and 10. On the tackle. No game. Second down. Jays have done a uh, have done great work in the first half on this uh, on the rushing attack for Franklin and Marshall. Here's Harrisman's pass. Alderfer, it's complete, Harrison and he'll fight forward for the first down up to the 46-yard line. Want to gain a 10 at three men trying to bring him down. First down. Yeah, just seeing how effective the defense has been. It says a lot about who they're doing it against. And Tlaib Gerald. Who amongst active uh, players in the Centennial Conference. Second most yards in his career. Second most rushing touchdowns in his career. And here they give to Gerald. Up the middle. Works forward for a gain of two to the 48. Tackle by Second down and eight on the way. Also taking a look at some of the Centennial Conference marks. Arisman in there as well as he'll go downfield. Looking for his guy, cut off his route. Pass incomplete. Was going for Lammers. Third down. We thought that ball might be headed towards the sideline, just not as deep as it was. All right, a third down and eight on the way. Right, it also pointed out that uh, Erisman was a 70% completion guy coming into this game and his halftime number is 13 to 22 has him just over 50 percent all right Erisman pressured and sacked Ian Lodge that is the sixth sack today for the defense sacked by Ian Lodge Lost for nine yards, fourth down. All right, Pershey to punt once again. Now they move into a bit of a different formation. Okay, Pershey will send the ball down the field. Fernandez will get it back in his 20-yard line. Won't well, let that ball head down the field to be down further. Past it. 23-yard line will be the position for the Jays to get started. If you missed it before the game started today, a moment of silence held here in the stadium to mourn the passing of Muhlenberg head coach Mike Donnelly, as the winningest football coach in their history, who passed away a couple days ago. Complications from leukemia, 65 years old.
Messenger carry. This was his, this would be his 21st season as the head coach of the Muhlenberg squad. Someone down right now for Franklin and Marshall after the one-yard carry. They'll bring up a second down and nine. Under Coach Donnelly, the uh, Mules were 141 and 62. And they earned 13 postseason invitations since 2000. Tied for the Centennial Conference Championship four straight years from 01 to 04. And had a uh, appearance in the NCAA playoffs in 2002. Last time they were uh, in as champions, 2008. The year in which he was voted the Centennial Conference uh, Coach of the Year. All right, on second down and nine. Here is Tamaro, pass. McFadden behind him, but he brought it in at the 41 yard line on a gain of 17 yards. 17-yard pass play. First down, Judge Hunkin. Sorry to see Coach Donnelly pass at the age of 65. All right, on first down, here is the give. Not getting a lot of running room it was Hogan Irwin. And he didn't gain a yard on the play. It'll bring up second down and 10. Frank, Frank, on the the Lost, Lost one, one yard, second down. down. Actually, the play lost a yard. Second down and 11 now. And here's Tamaro looking. He's got McFadden. We'll have enough for a first down. He's to the 47-yard uh, line. Only gain of 13. It's crossing route with the uh, tight end Stephen Gervasi. And they'll go with the screen pass. McFadden down the sideline. Broke the tackle inside the 20. 10, and he's run out by... Silva Munez. Oh, but there's a penalty flag over on the far side of the field back by the line of scrimmage. Well, you saw that he just used that block by Gervasi and then beat his man in coverage. And that's what had him off to the races. Legal substitution on the defense, which will be declined. So the result of the play puts the uh, Jays down in the red zone. 40-yard pass play. 40-yard play. The line of scrimmage is now at the seven. So goal to go for Johns Hopkins late in the third quarter. Penalty flag. <clears throat> Start. Offense. I don't seem to mark it off yet. Correction. Fire to the snap. That's fine. Well, I guess the uh, assumption was that it was a false start, but the line judge came in to say it was actually uh, offsides on the defense on Kevin Galt. Tamaro, he'll head it to the corner for the pass for Caggiano. Brings it in. Touchdown, Johns Hopkins. Complete 
Had all that room to work with. With that ball being on the right hash. And then just led Caggiano out there to bring it in before he hit the end line. Jamie Sullivan extra point attempt is good. 38 to seven over Franklin and Marshall here in the third quarter. Johns Hopkins scoring drive, six plays, 77 yards, two minutes and 18 seconds. Tamaro to Caggiano, three yard touchdown pass. So how about that for Tamaro now, his fifth touchdown pass today. As it said, his, uh, he had three touchdown passes against Susquehanna. Last time that, uh, say that anybody had five touchdown passes. I guess that would have been Germ John Germano last year against her sinus in which he threw six pass touchdown passes in 2016. All right, I'll get you updated scores at a moment. Sullivan send the kick to Lammers at the 12. Lammers with a uh, bench side Lammers return. return. We'll get tackled at the 29 yard line on a 17 yard return. All right, the Mules still leading over Ursinus 21 to 7. Ursinus and Franklin and Marshall came in as the two undefeated teams in the conference. And right now, both losing. That, that game in Muhlenberg is uh, right at the end of the third quarter. McDaniel has uh, scored a touchdown, and they now lead 10 to seven as they get ready to start the fourth quarter. This game at Dickinson. Susquehanna has now taken a lead on Moravian, 21 to 14 in Bethlehem with the uh, fourth quarter to begin there. And Juniata with a 21-13 lead over Gettysburg at the start of the third quarter. Play game, offense, 15. Five more penalties to me. First On the first play of the series, a delay of game penalty against the uh, quarterback, against the offense. So we talked about this weekend and the possibility that, uh, well, with Franklin and Marshall and Arsinus, they could create some separation amongst teams. Well, the idea that everybody will get bunched up again up at top. All right, on uh, first down, is Arisman's pass, and it's complete to Fortunato Perry when he's hurt after the throwdown by Ian Lodge. Talking about Ian Lodge. He's back to the uh, 29. In the original line of scrimmage. The five yard gain. And second down and 10 coming up. Looks like Perry's up on his feet. And even jogging off the field, too. Had a, should point out that here, at least in the stadium, I'm not sure if it made the video stream or not, but here in the stadium, a couple of Johns Hopkins athletes are addressing the fundraising efforts for Hurricane Harvey, given their The two living in the uh, Houston area, 
course, it wasn't just Houston that was affected. Galveston and so on there in Texas. Illegal substitution. Defense. Five-yard penalty. All right. Illegal substitution penalty on the Jays. Second down and five now. So the, the two athletes there as they continue to raise money for relief from the Hurricane Harvey They're going through Texas. All right, Arisman will just pull it down. 35-yard line, 40. Has a first down as he goes down. At the 44-yard line, on a gain of 10. Earlier this morning, I happened to get on the phone with my sister who lives in Gainesville, Florida, there in the center of the state, but with Hurricane Irma coming through there. And of course, the devastation in the southern part of Florida as Johns Hopkins blitzes, and Arisman's not going to get free. And in the seventh sack of the game here for the Johns Hopkins defense, tackle him back at the 36-yard line on a loss of eight. See from the edge and from up the middle. Sacking Taylor Erisman once again. Now, my sister relayed that uh, the town of Gainesville communicated to all its residents that they would have all the, uh, the, the while they typically have curbside recycling for all of their. <laughs> lawn cuttings and landscaping that needs to be disposed of, and they have that on a weekly basis, that with, a, with Irma having come through, that they would have everybody's uh, yard cleanup picked up by November 12th. It was just communicated to them last week that they figure that within the next five weeks, after Irma blew through two weeks ago, but they would finally have everything cleaned up, and they're in the center of the state, and that was only in a Category 1 at the time going through Gainesville. It just helps to drive home how much devastation occurs with a hurricane like that. Another sack for the Johns Hopkins Jays. Anthony Davidson with a one-hand pull-down of Arisman back at the 31-yard line. Fourth down and long. Fire to the end of the quarter. We have a timeout. Franklin and Marshall. There's one second on the clock. All right, so Franklin and Marshall actually called timeout to stop the clock with one second left in the third. This might be to allow them to punt with the wind behind them. Makes sense. Timeout after another sack of Taylor Arisman. Excuse me, Tanner Arisman. By the way, when I was on the phone with my sister, apparently for the Florida Gators, it's homecoming weekend. And in Gainesville, all school kids, elementary, middle, high school, they get off on the Friday. So they all had off yesterday because it's homecoming weekend <laughs> this weekend in Gainesville. Florida hosting LSU. LSU having some troubles of their own. Florida has been lucky with a few of their wins. All right, Percy's uh, punt fielded this time by Hubley. Uh, wasn't able to turn it up field really. And he'll be brought down at the 28 yard line. That brings us to the end of the third quarter. 38 to 7 through three quarters of the play. I'll have the fourth quarter call in a moment. Here on Hop TV, HopkinsSports.com, part of the Centennial Conference Digital Network.
All right, fourth quarter underway with a give to Tyler Messenger. A play will lose three yards. It'll bring up second down and 13. Loss of three, three yards, second, second down. down. You're in motion for Johns Hopkins. Tamara, oh, and his screen pass almost picked off. Pass is incomplete. Frank McGlinchey was right there. Frank third, down. third down and 13 for Johns Hopkins. All right, through three quarters of play. Uh, Johns Hopkins, 511 yards offense. Franklin and Marshall, 144. Time of possession even between the two teams. Jays with 20 first downs to Franklin and Marshall's 11. 418 yards of passing for Tamaro through three quarters. And how about Tyler, Tyler Messenger with a big run to the 40-yard line. A 15-yard gain, and the Jays convert third down and 13. Gain of 15 yards, first down, John Tucker. Jays 6 of 11 on third down conversions here in the contest. And a timeout going to be called by Franklin and Marshall. Using their second timeout of the game, of the half. All right, some other numbers through three quarters. Uh, David Tamaro, 32 of 44 passing, 418 yards, five touchdown passes, has been picked one time. Ryan Carey, six carries, 63 yards. Tamaro, seven keepers, 26 yards for him. Hogan Irwin, four carries, four yards. Boy, of the receivers, he's gone downtown to Luke McFadden on a number of occasions. Nine receptions, 204 yards for McFadden. Getting real close to the 222 that he had against Randolph Macon in the playoff game last year. Brett Caggiano, nine catches, 76 yards. Ryan Hubley, six catches, 48 yards. Each of those three guys have touchdown receptions. First and 10 from the 40 yard line and before they get the playoff, there's a penalty flag. False start. False start on that offensive line. Well, they've had plenty. We've watched a number of uh, defensive linemen jump as if getting uh, drawn off sides by the cadence of Tamaro. It certainly forced a bunch of false start penalties as well. A lot of action along that line of scrimmage. All right, first and 15 now from the 35. And on the option now... Tamaro will keep, gets past the 40-yard line. He's brought down at the 43. After a gain of eight. To Franklin and Marshall, Talib Gerald, 11 uh, carries, 21 yards. And Tanner Arisman being sacked as much as he has. He's been sacked eight times. I actually lost one, I guess, in the count. Has very few uh, yards at all. Tamaro keeps again on the read. Oh, pardon. It's not even David Tamaro anymore. It's Nick Leongus is in the game now. And his keep is a earns three yards. And on third down, yeah, his passed well over the uh, head of Jacob Ewer. Well, with Tamaro, he's a guy who came out of the game against Moravian. He sat against Dickinson, played last week against Ursinus, and then threw the majority of the game here today, 38-7 to lead, and after that last tackle, Decided that would be it for David Tamaro. All right, Hong Dominguez will send it high and have Lammers 
with the fair catch. Fair catch on the 11-yard line. Right, besides uh, Gerald with his 11 carries, 21 yards, Erisman's listed as 14 carries, uh, minus 25 yards. It's been sacked eight times. All the sack yardage goes against the rushing total. 43-yard punt. Erisman, just uh, 15 of 27 passing for 148 yards. He threw the one touchdown pass to Pretty and has not been uh, picked off. He did fumble one time on a giveaway. All right, on first down from the 11-yard line, here's Erisman, pass to Pretty, sideline, and it's incomplete. He's able to bring it down inbounds. Pretty has uh, four catches, 64 yards, and on the one touchdown reception. Dylan Alderfer, four uh, catches, 44 yards. Fortunato Perry, three catches, 29 yards. Tim Walter, two for 10. Garrett Percy's been busy today as the punter. Nine punts so far in the contest. On second down, here's the give, and it's to Gerald. He's going to lose a yard on the play. We'll bring up third down and 11. Gerald Perry, loss of one. Third, third down. down. All right, third down 11 from the 10-yard line, and Erisman's got four wideouts. And he'll just pull it down himself. He's up the middle past the 15, 20-yard line, 25, and brought down at the 30-yard line. 20-yard gain and a first down here. For Franklin and Marshall. Yeah, 20 yards, first down. All right, on first down, here's Harrisman. Harrisman across the middle got hit as he threw. He completed it, though, to Alderfer. Oh, penalty flag on the play. Flag on the play. Oh, offense. Uh, holding your penalty will uh, back up the diplomats. Back him up to the 20 yard line. So, first down and 20 coming up here for Franklin and Marshall. I only have one other Gainesville note. And it was really because of big news from earlier this week that as a, a part of homecoming, there's going to be a big tribute to Gainesville native Tom Petty, who passed away this week. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Gerald Hall Harris. of Fame band and Hall of Fame. Talk about Robbie Johnson. Recording act. Yep, native of Gainesville, Florida. He passed away at the age of 65 earlier this week. Three-yard three gain on that uh, play by Arisman. It'll bring up second down and 17. He's starting to use some of their, uh, some other players there on the defensive side. As Arisman for Pretty on the sideline. A little bit of misconnection. I thought Pretty had kind of stopped his route. Third down. Grant Moser in coverage. And uh, also Jonah Gundrum, who's in. Gundrum at a sophomore out of uh, Bethlehem, PA. All right, third down and 17 on the 23-yard line. Oh. 
Harris. Men will give on the draw to Gerald, and he is brought down right away by Lance Tackle back at the 22-yard line, a loss of one. So right now, Talib Gerald is averaging less than two yards per carry. All right, fourth down, and here is Pershey's 10th punt of the game. Looks like Hubley to receive. Boy, oh, caught it at midfield. <laughs> Great athletic effort to even pull that one in. And his momentum, of course, carried him forward to the 41 yard line. Short 28 yard punt. And a nine yard return there by Hubley. Zach Baker, All right, Zach Baker is in. And on first down, the bad exchange to Hogan Irwin. Ball on the deck, and it's going to get recovered by Franklin and Marshall. Definitely not the first exchange that you want. So it's recovered by the Diplomats, and they'll have possession at the 42-yard line with 9.50 to play in the contest. See who takes the field here for uh, Johns Hopkins on defense. Uh, going up against an undefeated team. Who won a firefight against McDaniel and then took down a tough Susquehanna team and last week beat Muhlenberg. All right, on uh, first down here, new quarterback and a sack. Uh, Zach Bradley, the senior, is in on his first snap, sacked by the Jay the defense. Ninth sack today of uh, Franklin and Marshall he quarterbacks. Right, play will lose 12 yards back to the 30. Second down and 22. As Franklin and Marshall starts to use. There's second line guys here. So Bradley will take that snap. Pass was tipped on the way. Marinelli got a hand in on that. Now the Jays still really have their starters on the defensive line playing. Saw Johnson and Klosser coming out of the game now. As well as Lodge. So it looks like they're going to Start to take out the linebackers. Michael Curry's coming off the field from that safety position. And then we had some of the backup DBs in the game. Still haven't announced the uh, penalty as of yet. Well, in for the Jays now, uh, Jack Nosevich, Ryan Weed. Gundrum's been uh, getting some snaps already. And Corey Orzanski. All right, so uh, no penalty on the play because of the tip at the line of scrimmage. Third down and 22 coming up. In that uh, defensive secondary. Now Kilbane will still get a little run. Remember, he's a freshman, so he's still learning on the job. Michael Kearns is in the game at one corner position. Pat Kelly at another. All right, on uh, third down and 22. Here's the give, and it's to senior Taylor Collison. He's the backup running back. Taylor Collison's the ball right here. Only his eighth carry this season. Gain of seven yards, fourth down. Play gain seven, and it'll bring up fourth down, and here's Percy on for his 11th punt of the game. Hubley back to receive for Johns Hopkins. Percy's punt low, it'll hit and then kick down the field. He's down the ball at the 24 yard line. Uh, 
All right, see who the Jays bring out here on this uh, possession. That's Nick Leongus. will take the snaps. Chris Martin is in the backfield at running back. Colton Fisher, a freshman from uh, Mundelein, Illinois, is one wide receiver. Penny flag as the play started. Leongus up the middle. He's up past the 40. 45 midfield. Gets past a couple more would-be tacklers down the sideline. Keeps his feet. He's brought out of bounds by the defensive lineman. Nick Leongus. But a penalty flag thrown back by the line of scrimmage. Offsides defense, so. Long run that time by Leongus. In fact, I lost the original line of scrimmage. But he's down to the 24 yard line. So Fisher's the wide receiver on the boundary side. They'll give them Martin. Chris Martin. No gain on the play. Man's the down for uh, Franklin and Marshall from their secondary. All right, let's see who's in the game right now for the Jays. Other wide receiver is Dawson Eicholtz, the freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio. He'll line up on the right side of the line. Seeing Patrick Maloney in at a tight end position. As uh, trainers <coughs> attend to Marlon Fenstermacher. Who actually had the team lead in tackles through three quarters. Looks like they're about ready to get him up on his feet. And walking off with the trainer. It's good to see him. He's played hard all game. He's got caught up in the wash of that last play. All right, Ike Colts and Maloney. And I believe that's Kyle Morris. Are the three wide outs on the right side. No, not Morris. James Mann, a junior, Pacific Palisades, California. He's out on the field on the right side. Martin in the backfield. Wide receiver to the left is Fisher. We'll run the offensive line in a moment. Second down and 10. And here's Leongus. He'll roll to the right side. He'll shoot a pass towards the end zone. Bringing it in. Touchdown, Johns Hopkins. Watch it as Leongus makes something happen here. And smartly, Dawson Eicholtz, along with Mann, both headed towards the end zone, and it's Eicholtz who brings it in for the score in the middle of the fourth quarter. Jamie Sullivan on for the extra point. Penalty flag beforehand. Offsides against the uh, defense. So they'll move it uh, one yard closer for Jamie Sullivan's extra point attempt.
And his kick is good. Jamie Sutherland's point after is good. John Tuffins, 45. Franklin would also All right, Dawson Eicholtz, a freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio, with the uh, touchdown catch from 24 yards out. His first as a Johns Hopkins Blue Jay. Johns Hopkins scoring drive, three plays, 76 yards, minute and two seconds. The youngest to Eichholz, 24 yard touchdown. Fourth quarter, Vincent 13, with Daniel Chan. So, start looking back at the uh, scoring summary. Shubli, Fernandez, Freeze, and now Eicholtz. With touchdowns. They just announced the scores here in the uh, stadium. And I'll be sure to give you scores in just a moment. As on the return, Franklin and Marshall up to the 22-yard line. Joe, well, the big one that the uh, crowd's listening to is the Muhlenberg or Sinus game. And it still sounded like our sinus was trailing in that contest. Our sinus, Franklin and Marshall, the undefeated teams in the Centennial Conference coming into this last weekend before the bye. Things are going well here for Johns Hopkins to take down one of the undefeated teams. And sounds like Muhlenberg at home is doing the job against uh, our sinus. We'll get you the actual score, though, when we can. All right, on first down, here's the run up to the 26-yard uh, line on a gain of four. Final score, Just announced that Muhlenberg beat our sinus 21 to 14 as the final. And also uh, Dickinson leading McDaniel 13 to 10. So it looks like the Red Devils are really trying to work into their second win of the season. As Collison on the carry to the 36 yard line. They'll move the chains on a first down. All right, other scores. Uh, Susquehanna still in a tight one. They lead at Moravian 28 to 21 with about four minutes to go in the contest there. And Juniata and Gettysburg are just getting started the fourth quarter. They're tied at 21. A Dickinson McDaniel game, by the way, 230 left with Dickinson leading 13 to 10. All right, on first down, here's Bradley in his pass. It's completed before he's hit. Collison brings it in at the line of scrimmage. But isn't going anywhere there. Oh, a big upset in uh, Division One as Iowa State defeated number three Oklahoma, 38 to 30. Let's take a look at the guys up front here for Johns Hopkins. See who's out on the field. Kyle Roberts is a freshman from Nescopec, Pennsylvania. He's in at one defensive tackle position. And here on second down, here's Bradley, and his pass is complete to Austin Bates at the 44-yard line. And another fresh set of downs. Steven Adams is in on the line for the Jays, the sophomore from Sparta, New Jersey. 
Armin Kuhl, sophomore from Andover, Mass, is at one defensive end position. And looks like uh, Hayden Good. That's Corey Tall, Bradley actually, is there at the other defensive end position. All right, Bradley keeps and runs uh, right into Jonah Adams Gunner. and Jonah Gunner. Jonah Gunner. We already talked about the uh, linebacker substitutes. In the secondary, Finn Zeckman at the safety position, a freshman from South Portland, Maine. Under four minutes to go here in the contest. Bradley calls for the snap and pass complete to Zachary Bross, who's a freshman from Bradley Allentown, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Ball at the 33-yard line. Let's bring up one personal note. I've certainly enjoyed all my years Perfect. calling Johns Hopkins football here on the video stream. Has been a lot of fun working with uh, many different guys over the years. Basketball season, called games from Mount St. Mary's as the pickoff here. Bradley throws it downfield. And that's Zeckman who picks it off at the 14 yard line. Finn Zeckman. Well, he picked up the receiver and just watched that ball come right into his hands. And the Jays will take over with 3.15 left. So one season with Mount St. Mary's University, a uh, Division I basketball program. We may have been the only team that ever played and flew into both Portland, Oregon and Portland, Maine, having played the University of Oregon and the University of Maine. University of Maine, by the way, still a two-hour bus drive from the Portland airport. All right, Drew Tamani in the game. Charlie Rodenberger at the carry on first down. Brings up second down and nine. And here's Rodenberger again. See if we can catch the guys up front. At left tackle, Brock Vaughn. At left guard, James Onsi. At center, it's Jared Smith. That's Tamaney's pass. It's complete. The fin. The man. Excuse me. Up at the 34-yard line. At right guard is John Resnick, a freshman from Boca Raton, Florida. And at right tackle is Lawrence KK. The junior actually started at left tackle this season in place of uh, Cam Little. All right, on uh, first down, here's Rodenberger. Tackle made that time by Hero Fasialis. Seeing Austin Hartman out there at the wide receiver position. Over there with Mann. Rodenberger on the run. Oh, and he's forward almost there for the first down. Pardon, not Rodenberger, that was Chris Martin on the carry. 10-yard run and a first down. Seeing Nathan Kamek out there at wide receiver, a sophomore from Cocoa, Florida. All right, 1-10 to go in the contest. And they give to Martin, he'll take it right side. He's across midfield. And stopped at the 48-yard line. Wrapped, 
And looks like it'll be one more play here from the line of scrimmage. Tomani will take a knee. Oh, and this Johns Hopkins uh, team today, having had their long 45 game regular season win streak snapped last week on the road at Ursinus, come back today against an undefeated team in the Centennial Conference and handle Franklin and Marshall today by the score 45 to seven. Final score win today that gives Franklin and Marshall their first loss on the season. And with the her sinus loss today, the Centennial Conference picture in the football side gets much more interesting as we ha hit the bye weekend here in conference play. Franklin and Marshall, her sinus, and Johns Hopkins all at four and one in the conference. The Jays didn't beat Ursinus. The Jays did beat Franklin and Marshall. Franklin and Marshall and Ursinus yet to play this season. Muhlenberg with a win goes to three and two. If Susquehanna wins today, they are up seven in the as they were going through that fourth quarter, they would be three and two. McDaniel was trailing, uh, but if they happen to win, they would be three and two. You're talking about right now three, four and one teams, two, three and two teams as our games come to an end and a possible third team at three and two. So a lot there with the Centennial Conference and boy, what it'll be like uh, as these teams regroup through the bye weekend before coming back to play in two weeks. And then it gives me a heads up that in two weeks, well, we will be back with you here on the video stream to bring you Johns Hopkins football as the Jays will play a Friday night game against Gettysburg on Friday, October 20th at 7 o'clock. That'll be our next appearance here on Hop TV. The Johns Hopkins alma mater. With the win today, uh, Coach Margraf with his 205th career win, 205, 86, and 3. His 149th win in the Centennial Conference. Once again, the final score, 45 to 7. October 20th.